All right. Welcome, everyone, to today's webinar. My name is Kevin Hill. I'm a Cloud Solutions Architect at NetApp. And today, we'll be taking you through uh, our automated data tiering in AWS with NetApp. And this is where we'll show you how you can take advantage of ONTAP Cloud's most recent feature and capability to tier data automatically from our uh, EBS tier that's on the ONTAP Cloud system to AWS S3 automatically. Uh, I will monitor the chat and the questions, so I'll try to answer them as best I can as we go through the presentation. And we'll get into a little bit of a demo, and we'll definitely have time at the end if there's any other additional questions. With that, let's go ahead and get started. So first off, just as a quick review, um, those of you that are familiar with NetApp, thank you for joining. Uh, for those of you not quite familiar with NetApp, just a little bit about who we are and what we do. So NetApp's been doing enterprise data management for over 25 years. Uh, we came out with our original operating system, the ONTAP operating system, which has been deemed the number one storage operating system. We also have other platforms and solutions and services available as well. But one of the main things that we bring to bear, both on-premises and the cloud, is our enterprise storage efficiencies. You know, this is where you can use uh, a lot less underlying capacity to manage your data either on-prem or in the cloud or through the clouds. And uh, we also allow you to uh, <laughs> easily replicate data to and from uh, your different platforms of choice. So if you have data on-premises and you want to get up into the cloud, that's great. You know, that's very easy to do. And we make that a very easy click and drag process with our hybrid cloud data management. You know, being able to see your dispersed uh, cloud resources, either on-prem in or uh, AWS or in Azure. And one of the other things that we uh, make available is the ability to seamlessly tier your data between different storage tiers. You know, this is either for moving your active workloads uh, from one tier of storage to another while they're actively being uh, utilized. And we're also going to be talking about how we now have the capability of tearing off your cold data uh, to an AWS S3 bucket. So we'll do another uh, real quick review of ONTAP Cloud as well. So what is ONTAP Cloud? ONTAP Cloud is nothing more than the ONTAP operating system running natively in AWS or Azure. Uh, we consume the different cloud resources for the compute to run the ONTAP system. We also uh, consume the public cloud storage. And this allows a variety of things. Mainly, it allows a cloud for strategy. It allows people to move their workloads uh, in a lift and shift type of capability up into the public cloud. Uh, there's a lot of other capabilities that are there as well. So um, it offers a lot of different things and also allows you to do enterprise data management in AWS and Azure. So the part of our cost saving features, these are our storage efficiencies. Again, we have our own snapshots for point in time recovery. The deduplication, compression, and encryption, as well as flex clones, those actually help you um, be secure, as well as to use uh, less underlying capacity. And uh, again, it's just on an ONTAP system, so you can seamlessly move your workloads into the cloud or back out as you can see fit. Now, looking at a little bit of a high-level architecture diagram, and this will make sense in just a minute, but I want to show you how things work natively, and then we're going to get into the tiering aspects. So these are our single node systems, either in AWS or Azure. This is where we you know, start up a virtual machine, an EC2 instance or a VM in Azure. Um, this is where we pull in different uh, disks, so EBS disks or LRS disks for our boot and root to start up the personality on tap system. And then we pull in one to many different EBS disks for our data tier. And actually in this case, that's also going to be called a performance tier when I, get to, when I talk about the tiering to S3. So this is our single system. If we look at our ONTAP Cloud HA uh, architecture really quickly, this is one of two flavors. This is where you can deploy an, an HA system in AWS and uh, a single availability zone. This is where you deploy two nodes of the HA pair. We also have a mediator that keeps track of the health of the systems. So in the case of an unforeseen event, the workload will be seamlessly pro um, moved over to the surviving node. And we keep the disks in sync synchronously so there's no data loss when the workloads pick back up. So that's our single uh, HA system, uh, single availability zone HA system. We also have the same kind of architecture 
but in a multiple availability zones. This is where we have each of the nodes of the cluster in different availability zones. The mediator can be in a different availability zone as well. You get to choose if you want uh, how many you want to uh, use, but it's the same exact process, the same exact configuration. And Cloud Manager makes it very easy to deploy all of that for you. So introducing tiering, this is where it's only a slight modification. The only thing you really need to do to enable tiering uh, between your performance tier or your data aggregates on your ONTAP cloud system and your S3 bucket is to create a VPC endpoint with the S3 service in your VPC. So this ensures the secure communication over the private AWS network to your S3 bucket or to or from. And when you replicate via SnapMirror, uh, and I'll show you this in the demo in a little bit, you can seamlessly uh, go ahead and replicate your data over to your ONTAP system. It'll drop off some data, metadata over to the performance tier and push the bulk of the data over into S3. And it, if you need it, it will actually get pulled back just as easily. Um, a quick screen capture. I'll, I'm going to show you this in the demo as well. Um, <laughs> I forgot I put this in here, honestly. Um, this is where when you create a new ONTAP cloud system, or if you create new data aggregates for your ONTAP cloud systems, you get to choose the the tier that you want to use. So first, you can actually use either no tiering to S3 for general purpose, throughput optimized, provisioned IOPS. Also, depending upon um, the ONTAP cloud system, you can also use the cold, uh, um, uh, <laughs> cold hard disk of SE1. But for if you want to take advantage of the S3 support, so this is where you can identify a linkage between your GP2 aggregates and your ST1 aggregates to S3. So it's pretty easy to do. So a little bit about tiering. I guess, well, hold on, there's a question. Let me go back. What's the question? What kind of resiliency ONTAP Cloud HA provides in AWS? AWS replicates, AWS replicates data within the same availability zone to multiple hosts. Hmm, what kind of resiliency does ONTAP Cloud provide in AWS? AWS replicates EBS data within the same availability zones to multiple hosts. So the data is actually synchronously replicated between the two on-top cloud systems. So the same data is available uh, in either availability zone. So um, uh, it's similar to what, um, what EBS offers, but uh, this is where if you have to do a failover uh, for EBS, depending upon your configuration, it's not going to, you know, your host may lose um, attachment to that disk until you reattach it. This is going to ensure that your applications don't lose sight of storage in the case of an unforeseen storage event. And what would be the internal cost of using AWS S3? Um, the internal cost of using AWS S3. A AWS S3 is, um, I don't remember the pricing off the top of my head, but uh, that's something that's very easy to find um, through a quick web search. I want to say it's um, two cents a gig per month, but please don't quote me because I don't remember off the top of my head. All I do know is that it is a much cheaper uh, cost than the monthly charges you end up having for storage for either EBS, uh, GP2, or SD1. So, let's see, coming back here, let's talk to tiering. So tiering, so what is on-site cloud tiering? How does it work? So first thing I also need to make sure that you guys understand, this is the same kind of capability for ONTAP Cloud that's available for your ONTAP systems on our physical devices. So we're, we're calling it peering within ONTAP Cloud and Cloud Manager. Uh, On-premises, uh, you, you may hear the term of fabric pool. It's the same technology and capability. And what we'll do is for any of your data, you know, if you, if you think of it in a couple of different forms, you know, you have your active production data, you've got the data that might be locked in snapshots for your point in time recoveries, and you might have data on that system which has been replicated with that system for a backup copy or a DR copy. So this is where tiering is going to be addressing your snapshot copies and your backup or your DR copies at first. You know, we uh, will be doing um, uh, analysis and uh, enabling uh, the tiering of cold blocks within your uh, production data and active file system in a future release. But for now, we have two different uh, policies, if you will. The first one is backup. So again, if you replicate data over to your ONTAP system and you have it uh, have the aggregates in a tiered uh, configuration with S3, it'll work for that. It'll also tear off your inactive snapshot data. 
in a lot. Let's talk about that a little bit more. So this is, <laughs> apologize, I will get into a demo. This is just for, for conceptually understanding what this means or how it works. So in a traditional fashion, if you're using a ONTAP system as a secondary cluster for backup, that ONTAP system is going to have to have enough uh, underlying capacity to host that data. So for an ONTAP cloud system, that's going to be your underlying EBS disk. So that's, that's kind of understood. Now, if you integrate with tiering, so you have your S3 bucket, when you actually mirror and replicate your data over to, S, uh, to that tier, you only drop off the metadata to the performance tier, the EBS disk, and you push the bulk of the data over to your S3 capacity tier. So this basically means that you, have, you can actually have a much, much smaller uh, performance tier or EBS aggregate initially. Now, if you break the mirror and actually pull that data back into a read-write format, and it, so that's the two things, break the mirror, so you have it read-write, and you actively access that data, that data will be pulled back over to your EBS performance tier. Now, for snapshot policies, it's very similar. You know, slightly different. You know, so a snapshot policy has a couple of different requirements. You know, first off, the performance tier, the EBS disks uh, for your data aggregate, that needs to be more than 50% utilized. So that is one of the criteria. The second criteria is any of the data that is locked in the snapshots has to be deemed cold by the tiering algorithm. Now, I'm using finger quotes here. That is roughly 48 hours. Don't quote me, but you know, roughly after a 48 hour window, if the data is locked in the snapshot is deemed as cold, it'll then seamlessly be moved over to the S3 tier. Now, what does this do for you? It frees up your performance tier to have more uh, capacity available for your active working sets so you don't have to add additional disks like you normally would. So what are some of the prerequisites? You know, what do you need to do and what do you need to have in place in order to take advantage of tiering? Well, if you're currently a user of Cloud Manager and on top Cloud, thank you, uh, you would need to upgrade your systems. You know, this is what we, uh, we actually just released Cloud Manager 3.3 .3, uh, earlier this week. Along with that, we uh, announced the availability of ONTAP Cloud 9.2 RC1. So those are the requirements in order to be able to take advantage of tearing or start with tearing. So your ONTAP Cloud system will need to be 9.2 or greater moving forward. So, and Cloud Manager makes that very easy to go ahead and upgrade your systems. So the other things, so if you're using a pay-as-you-go model from the AWS Marketplace, this will, there are three different flavors. There's Explorer, Standard, and Premium. Uh, tiering will only work with the Standard and Premium offerings because of the larger capacity capabilities, and will also work with your Bring Your Own License if you've purchased a license from NetApp or a partner. Now, also, EC2 instances. You know, the EC2 instance families, we're not supporting some of the legacy families any for tiering. This is where, you know, you can deploy an on top cloud system on an M3 and an R4, I'm sorry, an M3 and an R3 instance type, but those aren't going to be supported with tiering. Uh, we do support the M4, R4, and C4 families for doing tiering to S3. Um, your performance tier uh, or your EBS disk needs to be a flavor of uh, general purpose or throughput optimized of GP2 or ST1. And you also need to ensure that you create a VPC endpoint to your AWS S3 service. So, and just as a, another quick review, backup policy, all you really need to do is you just need to have a 9.2 RC1 destination, you know, and make sure that you have your aggregate is tiered to S3. That's it. You can, you can use Cloud Manager to just go ahead and replicate over to that new uh, system, and uh, the tiering will just happen automatically. And I'll show you that in a second. Now, the snapshot policy, again, Still also have to have a 9.2 RC1 instance with a tiered aggregate, uh, greater than 50% utilized for your performance tier, and the blocks in locked in those snapshots need to be deemed as cold. So with that, let's quickly go over to a demo. And where's my, my system? So, okay, um, here's... <laughs> Um, before I forget, uh, I also want to make sure that you guys know that you can come to cloud.netup.com to find out more information about tiering, about ONTAP Cloud, about Net our NetApp Cloud products, and everything else. But I wanted to get into Cloud Manager really quickly. So with Cloud Manager, you know, this is where, uh, again, we're at a 3.3 version. Um, I've got a couple of demo systems here. Uh, where to start? So I'm going to, I'm going to kick off a replication. 
first, and then uh, we'll uh, talk about a few other things too. So I'm just doing a click and drag from my on-premises system over to my uh, tiered uh, system. And I have some graph data. This has actually been deduplicated a bit. And actually, before I continue, there's a question. Um, without ONSAP Cloud, can the cluster on-prem push data to S3 directly? So the answer is, um, <laughs> the answer is sort of. So can, an on, can a physical ONTAP system push data directly to S3? Um, the thing there is really proximity. You know, you need to, you know, because we actually um, have a very um, uh, low latency, high throughput connection with ONTAP Cloud and the AWS S3 service, we're you know, basically in the same network, we have very low latency. And that's really one of the key determining factors of being able to go ahead and peer off to S3. Now, for the physical systems, physical systems, you know, if you have that deployed in a co-location facility, you have a AWS direct connect connection into AWS, that will ensure that low latency with S3 or AWS S3 service, so that will work fine. Um, now, if you don't, and you're actually, if you don't have that kind of a connection, you're on-premises, we also support storage good web scale as an S3 endpoint for on-prem systems. Again, the key factor there is the proximity between the performance tier and the capacity tier, ensuring that we can push data quickly to the, S, uh, the capacity tier, as well as pull it back from the capacity tier as, um, in a very quick fashion. So can we, <laughs> okay, can we attach, restore an S3 tiered snapshot to a different on -top, cloud on top cluster? Uh, short answer is no, but in an HA configuration, the partner node will seamlessly be able to go ahead and pull information from that S3 tier. If you're an if you're an HA on NetApp ONTAP customer 9.x on-premises, can you replicate those volumes to an ONTAP cloud and then use cloud manager to tier the data at the AWS? So the, the, I think the question, if I rephrase it slightly, can you replicate from an ONTAP 9.x system to a ONTAP cloud 9.2 RC1 system with cloud manager and have that, and that, and that data will then be tiered off to um, S3 you know, seamlessly? The answer is yes. So can you tier with Fabric Pool on an all-flash VAS 9.2 with a WAN connection to S3? It just takes more time. Direct connection would be much quicker. Um, I think that was a response uh, to one of the previous questions. So yes, again, the WAN connection, this is, this is where we'll have to do a little bit of investigation. I'm not sure about the latencies that are supported or what our requirements uh, are going to be um, with with that. You know, with a WAN connection, you can't guarantee the latencies that you'll ensue. You know, direct connect connection is much better. So, what was I doing here? Um, <laughs> sorry, graph data. So, graph data. This is actually um, this was roughly 40 gigs worth of data, but it's been deduplicated a little bit. So, this is the uh, volume that I'd like to replicate over. I'm going to give it a um, name, um, AWS uh, demo. If I could type demo uh, data. So it's the name that I want to use. And then I can select the destination tier. Um, I know I actually have the, uh, my destination tier as ST1 and S3. If I wanted to choose uh, a different tier, I could do that, and Cloud Manager would create the uh, destination tier for me. But I want to use what I currently have, and continue. And let's see, um, transfer rate. You know, this is where you can limit your transfer rate or unlimited. Um, this is, I'll just go ahead and do unlimited, mainly because I'm not doing any processing on that for this demo. But if you are doing active processing, uh, it is recommended to, to limit the throughput. Um, from the snap mirror will end up taking up as much bandwidth as it can. Um, there's another question. Can you have multiple targets from an ONTAP 9X to another ONTAP on-premises 9X and then to the ONTAP RC at least as an interim? So the, I guess the question is, can you have kind of a staggered uh, backup or replication relationship? The answer is yes. Uh, it really just depends on what your uh, backup and recovery or DR policies are, and if you need a secondary or tertiary system. So let's see, unlimited, continue. Continue, please. 
so I can do a mirror or a vault. So um, just for the purpose of the demo, I'll just click off, I take off a mirror. I'll just do the one-time copy. Uh, confirmation of what we're doing. So yep, this is fine. And click on go. And spinning wheel of death. No, good. Um, so the replication has started. I've already done a replication before from my on-prem system to my tiering demo system. And that's going to um, kick off in just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> we also have the capability of syncing uh, for, uh, to S3. Now, this is a cloud sync, uh, which is different, but we're not doing that right now. Um, so this is the de destination volume, AWS demo data. So that's, while that's getting initialized, uh, we can look at the replications. So it's starting to do the initialization. But in the meantime, you know, I'll also come over here and let's look at how to um, add a new tier. So either when you create a new system, so if you create, a, you can create a new system by just adding another environment, selecting the system that you'd like to, to deploy, and then uh, when you get to selecting the tier, um, you can choose the, from the different tiers. But here, let's get in our tiering demo. I want to go through and let's go through advanced allocation, and I can come to advanced allocation to see my data aggregate. So here I can see I've got my ST1 and S3 tier. If I want to add uh, another aggregate, I just simply have to create add aggregate. So I'll just do something unique, and here two, click on continue. And here I get to choose the type of tier I want. So if you remember from the earlier screenshot, you know I've got general purpose, throughput optimized, provisioned IOPS, and my cold or SC1. Okay, that's just for straight up EBS. Now, if I want to do a tier, I can go ahead with the different S3 support for general purpose uh, or ST1. So since I already got the ST1, let's just go and create the uh, GP2. Continue. I can identify the size of the disk that I want to deploy. Um, and since this is a standard, I can only go up to eight more terabytes. So I'll just say one terabyte, one disk, and then approve and purchase. So that's going to go and under the covers, go and create my uh, new tiered data aggregate for me. So that'll take just a second. But if we come back and look at the volumes, so if we come back and look at the volumes, hopefully do a refresh. All right, good. This is where um, we see that the data has just automatically increased. Now remember, my working set is roughly 40 gigs worth of data. And I've done this a couple times before, and I'll show you um, on the uh, other, on the other um, replications. But this is where I've dropped off a few meg of data uh, to my performance tier, and I've actually pushed most of the data over to the capacity tier. And this is really just metadata for the volume to understand uh, the characteristics of the volume, where the blocks would end up living when it gets pushed over to S3. So and presumably, Presumably other EBS types, version IFs are called, will also be terrible to S3 in the future. So uh, I'll rephrase that slightly. Currently, you're asking if it would be possible to use the provision IOPS or the SC1 uh, EBS flavors with tiering. So that's where we'll need some feedback. So for SC1, the answer is no. It's just, it's just not performing enough. You know, so there's no real way to ensure that there's not going to be a data, uh, data access issue. Now, but for provisioned IOPS, okay, we recently added in the, the ability to use provision IOPS as your performance tier or, or as a tier of EBS. But the thought here is because of the uh, cost and the price performance, if you really need PI ops, you're not going to also use it with tiering. You know, can you go ahead and do a vol move of that data off of, an, uh, of, of a PI ops uh, data aggregate and push it over to a tiered aggregate and take advantage of that uh, tiering? Yes. But most, but our current thought is that the PI ops aggregates are only going to be used for the most performance workloads where you don't want to tear that off in any uh, tear that off at all. Now, if there's other feedback from customers or uh, folks like yourselves that are out there uh, and you needing to use that, please give us that feedback. And then, if with based upon demand, we will add that in. But right now, um, we aren't envisioning that that's going to be a common case. So let's see, um, this is progressing nicely, I think. 
Yep. So again, dropped off a few more meg over to our performance tier, dropped off more data over to our uh, capacity tier. And, and again, what this will look like at the end, uh, roughly, is uh, where I've got, okay, again, 30, around 32 gig that's dropped off to my uh, capacity tier and just under a gig that's on my performance tier. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, now, if I look at my other working environments, action required. Oh, this is just telling me that I created a new aggregate and that I'm not using it. So I should go and try and clean it up if I'm not going to use it. So that's expected because we just created the new aggregate. Um, I also want to show you a couple of things on a different system. So here's a different system that I have. And I wanted to talk about uh, using the data. If you end up pushing it over to your DR system or uh, using it in a DR capacity, uh, what do you do if you actually need to use it? So this is a similar working set. You know, I push the data over to um, uh, this, this tier, so ST1 and S3. And this is still in what's called a data protection relationship. This is where I still have a snap mirror uh, relationship in effect. Fine, you know, everything's still going to be set and left on the, um, on the uh, capacity tier. And here we are. Now this is the second one that I did. Now this is where I actually broke the mirror. This is put into a read write format. And then that made it possible to go and pull back to my performance tier. Great. You know, it would pull that data back, but it will only pull back the data that needs to be accessed. So it's not going to be sucking everything back, only the data that I need to use. And in this case, I pulled back, you know, just over 11 gig worth of data uh, to process. And then left the uh, bulk of my data over onto uh, the S3 capacity tier. Now, if you look at the numbers, that doesn't quite match up. Well, the reason being is when I put this into a read-write format, that switched it from a backup policy to a snapshot policy. So again, some of my data was locked in snapshots, and that data locked in snapshots was then pushed back over to the capacity tier. And one other thing to show you, uh, snap. So snapshot policy. Now, this is where, <laughs> this is where when I set this up, um, it, it's, this isn't something easy to show in a demo, uh, so you'll just have to use your imagination a little bit. So this is where I pushed, you know, a uh, little over 42 gigs worth of data to this uh, volume. So this is in a read-write format. It's using the snapshot policies. I went in and actively m messed around with the uh, file system to lock some data within the, uh, lock some blocks within the snapshot. And then I waited uh, with bated breath for 48 hours to see would that data start to be moved over to S3. And it did. You know, so I only modified you know, a little bit of data, but it actually seamlessly pushed that over to S3. And if I need to use that, either with either a flex clone or via actually a snap restore of the snapshot, then that data will be pulled back uh, quickly and easily. And with that, that's pretty much all of the demo. And let's see, come back over here. So I guess a quick question, what's the question? Uh, can you show where the snapshot or backup policy set for tiering to S3? Can you show, how, show where the snapshot or backup policy set for tiering to S3? So the short answer is not currently in Cloud Manager. Uh, that is something that we've requested to be added in and we should have a new, um, uh, dot release, I'll say, um, at the uh, within about three or four weeks. So we've asked for that to be in there. But one of the things, actually, let me go ahead and get back out, whoops. And come back over to the demo. So one of the things that you can do is you can see that, but it's not gonna be in Cloud Manager. That would actually be if you end up using System Manager. So if you're within your um, AWS network, and on the private network within the VPC, you could actually go ahead and launch System Manager uh, and be able to go and look at that. Uh, unfortunately, I am not uh, actually uh, on my internal network. I'm actually using a, a, a public IP address for my on top cloud system, so I'm not going to be able to launch Cloud Manager and show you that. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to launch System Manager to show you that. But yes, you can see that and change that within System Manager very easily if you want. And I guess to be fair, I missed stating that there's one additional policy and that additional policy is none. So you can turn off tiering if you choose. Um, but by default, when we create new volumes with uh, Cloud Manager, uh, it, they'll, they'll be in a, um, 
when you create new uh, volumes of Cloud Manager, that's going to have a snapshot policy applied. And then if you actually replicate uh, in a data protection mode over to Cloud Manager, I'm sorry, over to ONTAP Cloud with tiering, then that'll be put into a backup policy. So just a quick review on some of the benefits and you know, what we've gone through today. You know, this tiering capability, it works the same way on physical ONTAP system as it does for ONTAP cloud systems. The configuration will be slightly different. You know, for a physical system, you need to ensure what your S3 destination point is going to be. And it has to be, uh, I'll say in close proximity from a latency perspective. So if you're in a co-location facility, you're typically going to have a direct connect connection. More than likely, you'll have you'll more than likely have the direct connect connection, and then you'll have that low latency with AWS S3. If you're on premises uh, with Fabric Pool, you'll probably you'll probably be using an S3 destination of storage good web scale. And there's additional uh, platforms being uh, certified and qualified now um, as well. So there's that this will be enhanced and expanded um, going forward. So um, also in order to take advantage of tiering, you need to be on the latest releases of Cloud Manager of 3.3, as well as use on Tech Cloud 9.2 RC1 or above as we uh, move forward. Uh, you can also be assured that your communication between your performance tier and your capacity tier is secure because of using the VPC uh, to S3 endpoint. And overall, you can save, um, you can actually reduce your spend in AWS by leveraging the tiering. You know, this is where, again, you don't need to deploy as much underlying EBS capacity. At the start, you know, if you're going to be replicating your data for DR or backup purposes to an ONTAP cloud system. And if you do need to actually pull it back to be used within your ONTAP cloud system, Cloud Manager will uh, help you automatically deploy any of the additional EBS resources you might need. And there's a question. So this tiering is automatically. Um, the, 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 I'll rephrase that. Tiering is automatic. You know, this is where you don't, you basically either choose to have things tiered or you don't. Um, again, with the different policies of either none, snapshots, or backup. Um, but beyond that, uh, there's nothing to change or tweak. You don't change the period of the algorithm. You don't change, you know, how the blocks get packaged up and pushed to, or pulled to S3. It's just done seamlessly for you. Uh, does NetApp have a tool to help size the connectivity bandwidth needed for tiering to S3? Um, uh, I am uh, actually, um, Philip, uh, what I'll ask you to do is please send me an email at hill at netup.com. We'll see if we can get you a little bit more of an, an answer or response. This sounds more like you want to be able to go and uh, tier between your physical ONTAP systems to S3. For that, I'll need to pull in some other additional people to help you. Um, I heard 9.3 can push data directly to S3. Uh, 9.3? <laughs> um, you might have more information than I do. Uh, we've only just released uh, 9.2 RC1. Uh, 9.3 is not available for a while. Now, the intent, now, and I think this might be where you're going, you know, the intent in the future release, and I don't know if this is going to be 9.3 or a different release, is that cold data within your active file system could be pushed directly to S3. Very similar to how data for snapshot policies is identified as cold and then pushed over, packaged up and pushed into S3 or pulled back from S3 as needed. That is the intent. Uh, that is coming in the future release. I can't tell you right now if that's going to land in 9.3 or not. But yes, that is, that is the future direction. So, um, with that, um, also if you uh, are new to ONTAP Cloud and Cloud Manager, uh, you, I do want to make sure that you're aware that we do have a fast track program. Uh, if you've not used it yet, you're eligible for a 30-day free trial. Uh, we also have uh, $100 AWS credit vouchers available for you um, to, to use. And also um, you can talk with one of our cloud architects if you're interested in pursuing things further. Uh, there's also a little bit of a short link here, um, bit.ly, uh, AWS underscore fast track, so FT underscore webby underscore promo. Um, and I'll leave that up while I answer this other question. So is there future support for Azure, Bluemix, and Google Cloud? So um, the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> the answer is, 
Actually, I do know that the next uh, hyperscaler, if you will, um, is uh, targeted as Azure. Um, again, I'm not privy to roadmap uh, where Bluemix and Google uh, Cloud Platform actually fit. Um, but uh, that, that again would be a question that we, uh, if you want to send me um, an email at hill at netup.com, we can see if I can get you um, more of a direct answer from the uh, product managers. So the URL for the credit voucher, um, I will ask you again to go to the short link here, http uh, colon whack whack bit dot ly, uh, and then aws underscore ft underscore webby, webi underscore promo. Um, wonder if you want to comment on the Nutanix and Google Cloud partnership. Um, that would be a topic for another webinar. <laughs> so that's not something that um, I can really uh, discuss right here. So <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting, uh, oh gosh, now I can't talk about that right here. So, um, but thanks for that question. So now, again, for any and all questions that you're uh, interested in, uh, please come to cloud.netup.com. Uh, we'll, we definitely have information on ONTAP Cloud there, NetApp Private Storage, Alta Vault, Cloud Sync, Cloud Control, anything that you might be curious about for cloud and NetApp, please come to cloud.netapp.com. And now um, we are at the end. Uh, I've got time for some more questions if you want. Um, but uh, that's, uh, that's it what we have for right now. I do thank you for attending. I'm going to stay online for a little while longer in case there's some additional questions. But thank you for attending. I do hope you found that this was helpful. Uh, and if you do have any additional questions later on, uh, please hit me up at hill at netup.com. But uh, I'll stay on the line for just a few more minutes in case any other questions come in. Uh, can tiering to S3 for non-netup storage? So the can we do tiering to S3 for non-NetApp storage? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, th this is an on-tap uh, feature that's been put into our operating system. So I can't speak directly for any other storage flavors. Um, I know if they actually have done their own due diligence with the underlying um, uh, uh, file operating system, then it's po I'm sure it might be possible. But right now, I'm not aware of others that do automated tiering to S3. I am aware of other software storage offerings that actually leverage S3 as your main storage, but not where you can actually auto tier off to or pull back from S3 like we do. Um, for uh, the person uh, uh, who's interested more in the $100 credit, uh, please go ahead and hit me up at hillatnetup.com, or you can actually use the intercom chat service, which is on cloud.netup.com or within Cloud Manager and uh, we should be able to um, direct you in the right way. And with that, um, again, I'll be online for a few minutes, but thank you everyone for attending.